My name is Robert Big Elk. I am of the Omaha Nation. My grandma gave me this name and she said, carry this for you, for the, for the people here of the Omaha Nation. My father was out to war, I guess, in Korea. My mother told me that. And she lived in Omaha and found it very hard and difficult to raise me. At that time, the, the Christians came along and they took me from her. They took me at a very young age, at the age of four, just a young boy back in the late 40s. And then during that time, it was very difficult. I didn't know what they were doing, why they took me away from her, but I ended up in an orphanage. During Christmas time, they would take me and place me in a home, a white family. And they would find out if they were, if I was reasonable or if I was able to live with them at that age. Things didn't work out that time. So I ended up back in the orphanage. And then again, the next year they came back again and tried it again. Nothing worked. So I went back to the orphanage. And during that time when I was in the orphanage, there was another place to send me, and that was at a Indian boarding school north of Omaha, called a little town called Winnebago, Nebraska. The boarding school at that time was a fairly new school, which was called St. Augustine's Indian Mission. There I was placed in that school for 11 years. Why, I don't know. At the age as, as I was, I never knew why I was sent there until I began to realize after, oh, I started maybe about, when I reached about 12 or 13 years old, they, uh, I started running. I knew all the kids were going home for Christmas. I knew the kids were going home for summer vacation. And I couldn't go home. I couldn't go home because the Catholics said, I had no mother, I had no father. At that time, I didn't really understand. But uh, I, I, I kept running. I, I, I decided that I wanted to run and, and get out of that place. There was a lot of beating, a lot of hurt. We couldn't speak our language. I didn't know at that time that there was a genocide going on. They never told us anything about a genocide. But at that time, I wanted so bad to get out of there because of the treatment that I was going through, not just me, but other kids. Everything was more like military. March to school, march to church, go to church every day had to go to Mass, became an altar boy, said the rosary. Evening time, same thing. I had to go to benediction at night, say the rosary again. And that time, I just got so sick of it. I started rebelling because I didn't like the treatment of what the Catholics were doing. And it really took a toll on me. There was no love. No love in this place. There was a lot of hard feelings. Always working after school. Always doing something. Never having time to play. It was always a constant, like a concentration camp. And when I found out that I had a home, a mother and a father, I started running. And a lot of things that I got out of that school were really detrimental to me because of the abuse that I went through. But I managed to pull myself away from that. I started running.
And each time I got caught, there was a time when I took a beating. They would set me in the middle of a floor and bring all the kids in this run room and line us up. Line all the kids in this room against the wall and watch. Watch this beating that I would be taking. And after the beating, after the beating, they would sit me in a chair and cut my hair. They would cut my hair just clear to the bald. I mean, I had a bald head. Humiliation, let's put it that way. I was humiliated by these people. And one thing they told the kids while they were cutting my hair, he would tell the kids, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen to you when you run and we catch you. You will get your beating first and then you will have your head shaved. And after that, all the kids would start to humiliate me because of my hair being the way it was. And at that time, I started to learn. I started to learn, learn to fight back. I hated that, but I had to do it in order for me to survive. Survival was very heavy for me in that time. I was just a young boy. And when I started running some more, all I got was a beating because my head was always shaved anyway, so I didn't have to have that. But the kids were always in that room watching me get a beating. But it made me stronger. It made me stronger to realize that I'm not supposed to be here. And when I did make my move for the last time, they told me, they said, we're going to let you go now. We can't have you doing this all the time. For the first time in my life, for the first time in my life, I got to see my mother out of, out of Ottawa when she was alive. I only got to see my mother put months together, I would say about eight to seven months out of my whole life. Not even a year I got to know my mother. But she's no longer here. But uh, I still remember, I still remember my mother because she was the one she was the one that tried to keep me. But the Christians, the Catholics said, no, we have to take him. We have to take him because you were an alcoholic. They labeled her as an alcoholic. So they took me and put me in this place. And when she told me, she told me when I was home, she said, you can't stay here. You can't stay here on the reservation because there is nothing here for you. I want you to go to school. I want you to go to school. And be something and come back and work with your people. I began to realize that, hey, there's something out there. There's something out there. I used to look through books and see different places that I like to go to. I did go to these places. And when I finished doing all that, I got, got the chance to go, go back home and sit down and listen. That's my time when I started to go into listening to the elders, the medicine people. And one thing I always learned, my learning with the elders and the medicine people were, don't say anything, just sit and listen. Sit and listen to what they have to say. Do not ever interrupt what they're saying. So I sat and listened for many, many, many years. And then finally the time came. The time came when I started making my move. And through my travels, I traveled clear across into Canada, Canada and back and forth across, crisscrossed this country in order to find out that there was something out there among the Indian people. The ones that uh, were not incarcerated into these boarding schools. And at that time, when I really got a chance to know all these people, I got to know a lot of kids from different tribes, which I never knew because the Catholics, the Catholics never said anything about other Indian people. So everything was sort of like going into a genocide, 
at that time being committed on the people, the Indian people, especially the children. And I was very fortunate to come out of that and drift myself into, into the elders and sit down and listen to them. That gave me great hope to understand that these people were very gentle about teaching, teaching their ways to me, teaching that there was a God and that I wasn't forced to know who he was.